In this video, we're going to discuss an application of derivatives in business and economics. And this is in finding marginal cost, marginal revenue, and marginal profit. Let's get started. Let us first define these uh, marginal functions. So suppose we have here c of x, r of x, and p of x that represent the total cost, total revenue, and total profit from the production and sale of x items. The marginal cost at x given by this derivative at x, so we might think of this word marginal here as derivative. So when you're looking for marginal cost, it's the derivative of the cost function. So marginal cost at x, it's the derivative of the cost function at x, is the approximate cost of the x plus one-th item. So marginal cost usually refers to the added cost brought by producing an additional item. But when we use derivative to compute for marginal cost, it represents the approximate added cost brought by producing an additional item. Therefore, the marginal cost at this production level X is the approximate cost of the next item, which is the X plus one item. So this derivative C prime of X, which represents the marginal cost at X, approximates this exact cost of producing the x plus one item. Take note that this c of x here is the total cost of producing x units and c of x plus one is the total cost of producing x plus one units. Now, does this approximation make sense to you? If we go back to the interpretation of the derivative, so C prime of X gives you the rate of change of the cost function at X, which means that when we increase the X value by one from X to X plus one, we would expect that the cost will change by this amount. But this is just an approximation. We can also obtain this uh, approximation here from the definition of the derivative. Recall that uh, C prime of H is equal to the limit as H approaches zero of C of X plus H minus C of X all over H. So if we want to approximate this uh, derivative, then we may choose a very small H close to zero. But if we have a discrete variable x, which takes on whole numbers like x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, then the smallest value of h that we can have is h equal to 1. So if we use that value of h, then we'll get here h equal to 1. So therefore, you'll get c of x plus 1 minus c of x is approximately equal to c prime of x. Note here that if the cost function is in dollars, then we may also use dollars for the derivative c prime of x. The reason is that our approximation was actually this difference over h where h is equal to 1. And what is the unit of that one? It is one item. So this is like dollars per one item. Now, what is the unit of the derivative? So if the cost is in dollars, then the unit of the derivative will be dollars per item. And as you can see here, we can cancel these two units and we'll get what? This difference equal to C prime of X and both will be in dollars. This approximation can also be written into this form. So just moving the negative c of x to the left hand side of the equation. 
This means that the total cost of producing x plus 1 items can be approximated by the total cost of producing x items plus this c prime of x here. And it is the approximate cost of the next item, which is the x plus 1th item. So, for example, if we have c prime of 15, which is, let's say, equal to 20. So, if this is the marginal cost at x equals 15, then we may use a unit of the cost function here, let's say dollars. And how do we interpret this marginal cost at 15? This gives us the approximate cost of the 16th item. It is 15 plus 1. So that is 16th item, not the 15th item. Similar definitions are given for marginal revenue at X and marginal profit at X. So marginal revenue at X is given by the derivative of the revenue function. And it gives us the approximate revenue from the next item, which is the X plus 1th item. Therefore, this marginal revenue at X approximates this exact revenue from the sale of X plus 1th item. And we may also write this approximation into this form. So, for example, let's say that R prime of 100 is equal to 500. And let's say that the revenue function is in dollars then we can conclude that $500 is the approximate revenue from the sale of what? From the 100 first item. Not the 100th item, but it's the next item, which is the 100 first item. Similarly, the marginal profit at x given by the derivative of the profit function is the approximate profit from the next item, which is the x plus 1th item. So again, we have here p prime of x, which is approximately equal to this difference, which is the exact profit from the sale of this next item here, x plus 1th item. And we can also write this expression into this form. So here, for example, we have a P prime of 50, which is, let's say, equal to 350. Then we can say that $350 is the approximate profit, approximate profit from the sale of what? From the production and sale of the 51st item. Now let's solve this problem. Suppose we have this cost function and revenue function of a company that sells a certain product. And let's say that this cost function and revenue function are in dollars. So let's find the total cost, total revenue, and total profit from the production and sale of 50 units of this product. And then let's also find the marginal cost, marginal revenue, and marginal profit when 50 units are produced and sold. And let's interpret the results. And next, let's find the exact cost of producing the 51st unit. And the use R of 50 and the marginal revenue at 50 to approximate the revenue from the sale of 52 units. And lastly, use the marginal profit at x equals 50 to estimate the change in profit if the number of units produced and sold is increased by three units. So we can easily answer this first question by using this definition of the cost function and the revenue function. So let's find the total cost when x is equal to 50. So that is c of 50. So that is just equal to 60 times 50 squared and then plus 25,000. And this is just equal to $175,000. And then we compute for the total revenue from the sale of 50 units. 
So this is equal to 50 cubed and then minus 10 times 50 squared and then plus 35 times 50 which is equal to 101,750. And to find the profit from the sale of 50 units, so recall that a profit function is equal to revenue minus cost. So therefore, a profit from the sale of 50 units is equal to revenue from the sale of 50 units minus cost of producing 50 units. And this is just equal to 101,750 minus 175,000. And this is equal to negative 73,250. This means that at this production level, the company is still losing money. And this amount here represents the loss of that company. Second problem, so we want to find marginal functions here. So marginal, it's just the derivative of uh, these functions. And we're given x equal to 50. So we want to compute for c prime of 50, and then r prime of 50, and then p prime of 50. So let's compute first c prime of x. So c prime of x, it's the derivative of this cost function. And that is just equal to 120x. So therefore, C prime of 50 is just equal to 120 times 50. And this is equal to 6,000. Now let's compute for R prime of x. So R prime of x is equal to the derivative of this expression, which is equal to 3x squared minus 20x and then plus uh, 35 and then plugging in x equals 50 we'll get r prime of 50 equal to 3 times uh, 50 squared minus 20 times 50 and then plus uh, 35 which is equal to 6535 and now to compute for the marginal profit since uh, p of x is equal to r minus c which means that the derivative of P is just equal to the difference of these derivatives, R prime of X minus C prime of X. So P prime of 50 is just equal to the marginal revenue at 50 minus the marginal cost at 50. So this is equal to 6,535 minus 6,000, which is equal to 535. Let us now interpret these values here. C prime of 50, which is equal to 6,000, in this case $6,000, will give us the approximate cost of the 51st unit. While $6,535 will give us the approximate revenue from the 51st unit and lastly this 535 here will give us the approximate profit from the production and sale of the 51st unit Next problem, let's find the exact cost of producing the 51st unit. So the exact cost is just C of 51 minus C of 50. Cost of producing 51 units minus cost of producing 50 units, which is equal to using this cost function here. This is just equal to 60 times 51 squared plus 25,000. And then minus C of 50, but uh, we found this a while ago already. So this is minus 175,000. And this is just equal to $6,060. Note that in part B, we approximated the cost of producing 51st unit. And our approximation is $6,000. And this is close to the exact cost, which is $6,060.
Next problem, let's uh, use R of 50 and the marginal revenue at x equals 50 to approximate the revenue from the sale of uh, 52 units. So to approximate the revenue from the sale of uh, 52 units, we may use the revenue from the sale of uh, 50 units and then plus 2 times the marginal revenue at 50. And why do we have 2 times R prime of 50? Because this marginal revenue, R prime of 50, gives us the approximate revenue from the additional unit, additional one unit. Since we're adding two units, that is from 50 to 52, then the approximate additional revenue will be 2 times R prime of 50. And this is equal to R prime of 50 is 101,750 and then plus 2 times R prime of 50. So that is 6,535. So this is equal to 114,820. And this is our approximate revenue from the sale of 52 units. Last problem, use the marginal profit at x equals 50 to estimate the change in profit if the number of units produced and sold is increased by 3 units. Similar to the preceding problem, we can approximate P of 53 by P of 50 and then plus 3 times P prime of 50 because again, P prime of 50 will give us the approximate change in profit if the units produced and sold is increased by one unit. Therefore, the change in profit P of 53 minus P of 50 is approximately equal to 3 times P prime of 50. And what is P prime of 50? We found this a while ago already. And this is equal to $535. So therefore, this is equal to $1,605. So this is the answer to this problem.